The Overwatch World Cup has been our first taste of the new spectator tools that Blizzard announced a few days ago. So, did we get the upgrade in spectatability that we were promised? In a word, no. To make a metaphor, Blizzard is trying to screw in a screw with a hammer even though somebody has already given them a drill. What's the problem then? Well, Blizzard got all these amazing new tools and should be able to make a wonderful and cohesive spectating experience, right? Yes. In fact, I think the problem with the spectating experience comes down to a lack of understanding on Blizzard's behalf, both of what the fans want to see and the current state of the match. Let me break it down like this. A single game of Overwatch can be split into multiple parts, and for each of these parts, certain camera angles offer a better viewing experience. The current problem with the Overwatch camera system isn't the system itself, but the fact that they are using the wrong cameras at the wrong times. In fact, they do this so consistently that it makes matches both confusing and nauseating. So, instead of sitting here and watching the Overwatch League implode under the crushing weight of its own poor camera work, I'm going to explain how I feel the camera team at Blizzard should use their current systems to effectively create an awesome spectator experience. Downtime. Downtime happens at the start of a match and in between every major team fight. Professional teams never trickle in which means that there are going to be times during the game when the audience will be watching a chunk of gameplay in which nothing is going on. Nobody is shooting each other, no abilities are being used, teams are simply gearing up for the next major play. So far during these times, the camera crew has offered us shots like this. What riveting gameplay! The fact of the matter is that downtime can be used to preemptively or postemptively educate the viewing audience on either a previous play or the next play. For example, if a massive team fight just happened, Blizzard's camera crew could use their awesome new replay feature to take a step back in time and give the audience another look. Then, once the team fight is about to happen, they can cut back to the live action. However, another way to use downtime is to signal to the watching audience the locations of each individual on the map so that they are mentally prepared for the next moment. You can do this in one of two ways. Either you take the time to go through the third person perspective of each individual on the defending team so that the audience can see their setup, or you go into the icon camera so that the viewer can have a basic idea of both how one team intends to attack and how the other team intends to defend. The reason this works so well is that Overwatch is fast paced and has significant amounts of action that happens on the screen simultaneously. This is in contrast to traditional sports which have single point focus, usually a ball at all times. In order for a viewer to enjoy what they are watching, the media in front of them must first and foremost make sense. In the current state of spectating Overwatch, fans are being treated to several jump cuts a second that are bouncing them all over the map, leaving them disoriented. To quote my father, right as you get comfortable watching, they have you off to somewhere else. This problem of being disoriented can be fixed simply by giving a bit of information during downtime to the viewer, thus allowing them to build a mental picture of the current state of affairs. In this way, the viewer can appreciate what happens during the fight without having to try and break down what is happening while it's happening. The team fight. So now you should be cycling through the players in third person or up in the icon camera, but you recognize a fight is about to start, or that at least the teams are about to start their posturing. Which camera should you go to now? It's quite simple. Either you go to the third person perspective of the poking DPS or you stay up in the arena camera looking down on the action as this is the pre-fight phase. You see, team fights can be broken down into multiple parts. The pre-fight phase, the initiation phase, the main fight slash first pick, and the cleanup phase. Each of these phases has ways in which they should be spectated to maximize the viewing experience. 
As I expressed before, a big chunk of what Overwatch needs to do with its camera system is preemptively paint a picture for the viewing audience, so that when the big fight does break out, they know more or less where everyone is in relation to each other so that they can follow the fight when it happens. During the pre-fight phase, you can accomplish this just by not going into first-person camera. By being in third person, not only does Blizzard's new smart camera follow the bulk of the action, allowing for spectators to easily follow what is happening, but you also don't lose the sensation of being inside of the action. If you want to stay up in the arena camera, you do lose a little bit of the action feeling, but you also get to take in more of what is happening. This is particularly effective on maps where players spread out a lot, or there is a significant piece of terrain that you need to work around with the camera. Once the initiation has happened, usually some big CC or the attacking team engages in a flanking maneuver, then you immediately go to the arena cam. You see, something I simply don't understand when watching Pro Overwatch is that when a team fight happens, the camera crew has to think to themselves, hmm. This is the time where the most stuff is happening at once, and it's literally called a team fight. I guess the best thing we can do is use the camera that is the most limiting to the spectator experience and focus on an individual's play. That way, everybody can be completely fucking lost. Then the manager replies, that sounds great. Let's also be sure that if we ever hear again, Gialti, we snap to their perspective immediately, so that we lose our entire audience on the roller coaster of nausea that is Dragon Blade. The more puke we find on the floor of the convention hall at the end of the match, the better off we are. Let's make this simple. There is a reason first-person camera doesn't exist in any other sport. It makes the game completely unwatchable. There are only three ways in which using first-person camera is okay. The play of the game, a replay of a single character's perspective, notice how my first two examples were both replays and not during live action, and lastly, if you absolutely have to, like the Mafia will kill you if you don't levels of have to, then you can use first-person perspective during team fights. But here's the catch, as a picture in picture in the lower corner. I might be alone here, but when I turn on a match, I want to watch the fucking match. If I wanted to watch an individual shoot people, I would go to Twitch or YouTube. Before we move on to the last phase, I want to make an honorable mention to a cardinal sin that the camera teams of Blizzard make all the time watching one-on-one -on -one duels over the bulk of the action. I get that you want to see the Tracer v Tracer dick waving contest, but there is a way better way of doing it than sacrificing the viewing experience of the entire team fight. Once again, picture in picture baby, picture in picture. The last phase we really need to talk about is the cleanup phase. This is the phase where a few players have died for one or both teams, and it's up to the remaining members on the field to clean up the fight. This is where Blizzard's awesome new third-person camera really gets a chance to shine. In their behind-the-scenes video, Blizzard said, We need a solution to be able to watch some of the almost unwatchable heroes like Tracer or Game. Which indicates to me that this is exactly how it is meant to be used. The people who usually clean up fights are Tracers and Genjis. I know that I for one would have had a much easier time watching Sinatra clean house on Team Korea if it wasn't in first person view. Not only would third person have given me some bearings as to where Sinatra was on the map, but I would also have understood his relationship to his teammates and his opponents more easily. Essentially what I'm trying to say is that the more information you can have is always better. When you commit to first person, you are screwing the viewing audience out of what they came to see. Arena cam and third person cam should be the bulk of the watching experience. After the team fight is over, you're right back to the downtime phase of the game, which means it's a great time for some preemptive signaling or a look back at a cool game moment. If you follow my camera plan, not only will the viewing experience become streamlined for every match, 
but you will also be able to give your viewers more of the game they came to see. I'll end off my video with a few key thoughts. The reason I think all these changes are for the better is that Blizzard needs to be marketing to a different audience than the one they are currently trying to appease. First person camera requests are coming from people who play their game all the time, which is a problem because there is a good chance that the bulk of their audience is going to be people who don't. And even if the bulk of their audience is only hardcore gamers, I still think Blizz needs to realize that they already have that audience. They already watch. They already care. Which means that trying to appease them is pointless. Again, they're already there. The people Blizz needs to be geared towards are the moms and the friends of the people who already enjoy the game. You see, if 10 year old Jimmy wants to see a live Overwatch match, do you think he is paying or do you think mama's paying? It's probably mom, right? That means that Blizzard has to convince mom that she wants to come back, that she wants to keep bringing her kids. If she throws up her hot dog trying to watch the game, like my mom did trying to watch the Overwatch World Cup, then she is going to be less inclined to bring her kids back for another game. The same works for friends. If I have a friend that isn't into something I like doing, I am still going to invite them over and try and share what I enjoy. This means that much like mom, this person has to be able to get into Overwatch enough when they see it with me that they are likely to start watching it on TV or go to another game. If Overwatch remains unspectatable for casuals, then it really doesn't matter how much the hardcore fans want to believe that they can actually tell what's going on in this clusterfuck, because the eSport will never grow. But you know, don't worry. I'm sure this is exactly what all those investors who bought teams want to hear, is that Blizzard can't grow an eSports audience. This has been Mad Buddha, over and out.